Box 13, with the star of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd, as Dan Holliday. Box 13. Box 13. Box 13. Box 13. Well, this is great. I come to the park to get a hot idea, but the day turns out hot, and my idea turns out cold. Idea. Well, I thought I'd find something different in a public park, and I did. A small boy mashing his ice cream cone against my brand new trousers. And all to meet a deadline. Deadline. Story idea. Why didn't I do what I should have done in the first place? Copy. Copy, boy. Hi, Mr. Holliday. Hiya. Hey, Smith, where's the lead on that fire? Hiya, Mr. Holliday. What do you say, Bill? Jones, where's that interview? Hiya, Dan. How are you, Joe? Where's the makeup on page four? Hiya, Holliday. What's a good word, boy? Hiya, Mr. Holliday. Hiya, Susie. Anything in box 13? Box 13. Starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Now for Box 13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Go to the park and get a story idea about romance. Sure, why not? What do I come back with? Gravel in my socks, sand in my shoes, and a June bug in my hat band. Holiday, why didn't you pick a different profession like driving a coal truck? Mr. Holiday. Uh, uh, what's that, Susie? I said, there's a message in box 13 for you. Oh, thank you, Susie. Thanks so much. Don't mention it. Say, you got a faraway look in your eyes today. Yes, but only as far as the dry cleaners. Dry cleaners? Have you ever had a small boy wipe his ice cream cone off on your trousers? Oh, girls don't call them trousers. In our set, it's slacks. So it is, Susie, so it is. Well, see you later. Okay, if you say so. But I still don't like that look in your eyes. You look like you might get into trouble. You know what I think after spending the day in the park? What? Trouble will be a welcome relief. <laughs> Why did I ever have to decide to be a fiction writer? I could have stayed a newspaper reporter. I could have kept on writing those snappy obituary notices and worn a hat that turned up in front and shoes that did the same thing. Well, better see what's in this envelope. Hmm. If you want real adventure, be at the corner of 7th and Main at 10 p.m. tonight. A black limousine will pick you up at that time. Do not try to engage the chauffeur in conversation. Uh, what's this? No signature. Oh, ho, no signature. Black limousines, chauffeurs who won't talk. Meetings on street corners at 10 o'clock at night. Well, this should be interesting. There it is, a black limousine. And look at that chauffeur. This way, Mr. Holliday. Oh, uh, <clears throat> thanks. What a character this driver is. He looks like he spent his nights on a nice cold slab down at the morgue. Wonder if I can get him to talk. Uh, driver. I said driver. Oh, uh, chauffeur. Oh, you. Oh, uh, oh, pardon me. Through there, Mr. Holliday. So you do talk. <laughs> I was beginning to wonder about that. This way, Mr. Holliday. Uh, 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 who's that? It's only me, Mr. Holliday. That black suit, it 
Makes you almost invisible, you know. Yes, I know. Uh, follow me. You're curious about the way you were brought here. Did it frighten you? Maybe. Maybe not. This room, please. <laughs> My office. Well, this is very cozy. Well, I'm glad you find it so. To eliminate a lot of questions, I'd like to say this. I know all about you. Uh, all? You're a successful writer. Apparently, you fear nothing, and I would presume that some of your adventures spring from that ad you run every week in the Star Times. Did you find it interesting? <laughs> Adventure wanted. We'll go any place, do anything. Do you catch many people with that ad? I caught you. Or is that vice versa? I had you investigated, Holiday. I know where you live, what you do. The newspapers have told me of your experiences. Hmm. What are you leading up to? You'll notice I had you brought here by a devious route. I wanted to be sure no one knew you were here. Go on. How much do you know about insurance, Holiday? A great many people buy it. A great many don't. And of those who do buy, a great many intend to defraud, to steal from their insurance company. Now look, this is a racket. I'm not interested. My name is Abner Blake. I'm the chief investigator for Northern Insurance. Oh. Do you remember the disappearance of Dr. Max Alexander? I read something about it. Why? He carried a very large policy with us. He's been gone almost seven years. When his seven years are up, the law will permit his widow to collect. And Holiday. Yes? I don't think Alexander is dead. <laughs> This man has the coldest, frostiest eyes of any professional man trailer I've ever seen. And he's loaded with energy. Energy which I'll bet has helped him track down the people who tried to cheat his insurance company. Boy, I'm glad I'm on his side. If you'll think back, Dr. Alexander performed a very delicate brain surgery on a prominent man. The operation was not successful. I remember that he was criticized in some circles for taking a chance. Immediately after the patient died, Alexander walked out of the operating room, the hospital, and so far as we've been able to prove, right out of this world. But I still feel that he's alive, somewhere. And you believe it's an insurance fraud? I'm sure it is. And I have a reputation, Holiday. No one has ever attempted to defraud Northern Insurance and has been successful. You, uh, suspect Mrs. Alexander? Hardly. She's barely left her house in all these years. She receives no mail except from her daughter. Her daughter? Uh, she lives in New Mexico. What about your regular men? They've looked everywhere. They've come up with absolutely nothing. Police? Same thing. And you're afraid you'll have to pay off? No. Not if I have a smart man, a resourceful one, a man who can be as relentless as I am. And I think that man is you. <laughs> If Shakespeare were alive, he would cast Abner Blake in the role of Macbeth and throw him an extra part as one of the witches. <laughs> but that's no affair of yours, Mr. Holliday. You've got to find a man who's been gone for almost seven years. And if you were the hero of this story, you'd go to the files of a newspaper and look into the past. Well, if it isn't Dan Holliday, what are you doing down the morgue of the Star Times? What would anybody be doing down in the morgue, Mac? Well, some of them just lay there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know me, Dad. I, I just got to have my little joke once in a while. Now, uh, what was it you're looking for? Oh, uh, the clips on a citizen named Dr. Max Alexander. What have you got on him? The works, Dan. The whole works. Prominent man dies following delicate operation. Doctor criticized for taking chance. Dr. Alexander walks out of operating room and disappears. Grief-stricken wife employs private investigators when police fail to find Dr. Alexander. Dr. Alexander given up for dead. Not a bad-looking citizen, the doctor. He's been shot from more angles than this Philadelphia at Atlantic City. Kindly eyes, intelligent face, strong chin... Yes, Doctor, when I see you, I'll know you. And I hope to see you soon. Yes? Oh, I'm Dan Holliday, Mrs. Alexander. I'd, I'd like to talk to you about your husband. My husband is dead. Well, some people think he isn't. They found something? They think he's alive? Come in. 
Now then, Mr. Holliday, who are you? And why are you looking for the doctor? Uh, a commission from the insurance company. I hoped you might give me some information. It was on all the front pages. That's exactly as it happened? Yes. He was never seen again. Oh, Mr. Holliday, if only you could find some trace of him. I'm going to try. You don't know how terrible it is. Almost seven years. But still, I've had the feeling that he'll come back someday. You look for me, too. Well, of course. I miss him so. What about your daughter? After her father's disappearance, she couldn't stand it here in town. She went to our ranch in New Mexico. Oh? Her father's disappearance broke her heart. I... I pray you find him. Mrs. Alexander, so do I. Mrs. Alexander is a grief-stricken old lady. One who sincerely wants her husband back. So, where to look first? This is the build-up to the main story, Holiday, and if you're smart, you'll... You'll bring in all the characters. Where to, mister? I want a drawing room to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Well, Holiday, you've got a railroad ticket and an hour to make the train. Better get back to your apartment. A quick shower, pack your bag, and get on your way. We've been waiting for you, Mr. Holiday. Well, gentlemen, is this a pleasant intrusion? And I hope you are gentlemen. We were positive you wouldn't mind. Oh, of course not. People break in here regularly. Good. Sit down. If you don't mind, I like the air up here. As you wish. I understand you like to travel, Mr. Holliday. Travel? A wonderful pastime, travel. Ever think of uh, South America? Often. You see, I'm a Carmen Miranda fan. How would you like to go to South America? For me, all expenses paid. For as long as you want to stay. What would I have to do? Just forget a few things. Like New Mexico? Particularly New Mexico. Give me about two weeks and I'm your man. You don't seem to understand. You're leaving tonight. Well, that's what I mean. But I'm going west. No, south. You and I would make a nice compass together. Now, suppose you point north and walk right out of this apartment. Oh, and don't forget your gorilla. You mean Spencer? If that's his name, I mean Spencer. You'll hurt his feelings talking that way. Well, that makes us even. Just looking at him hurts mine. Is it uh, South America? In a way. At least I'm showing you the open-door policy. Now, get out, you and your gorilla. Spencer... I wouldn't recommend that. So? I said get out. Have you ever stopped to consider something, Mr. Holliday? What? You may never get to New Mexico. You are listening to Box 13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. And now, back to Box 13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Well, well, now you've got all the ingredients for a story. Insurance investigator doesn't believe doctor is dead. Wife doesn't believe doctor is dead. Two men try to stop Ryder from making further investigation. All right, Holiday. Write the rest of the plot. Well, maybe you'd better hit the sack. This is very pleasant. I've got a comfortable drawing room, and I'll bet it's got a thousand springs to ease my worries. Uh oh, the man with the urge to send me to South America. Well, I've got something for him. Go. Now, fellow, what's the big idea breaking in here? I'm sorry. I must have come into the wrong drawing room. 
You came into the wrong apartment a couple of hours ago. Now, what do you want? I just want to go to sleep. In my traveling bag? I was looking for my razor. I wanted to shave. You just had a close one. Come on. Where? To find out if you got space in this train. If you haven't, we'll make some for you. Under guard in the baggage car. <laughs> This is fine. I couldn't prove a thing. My friend had space, and to the conductor, it seemed like a perfectly logical thing to mistake car 19 for car 18. I wonder who this man is and who's in back of him. Next stop, Albuquerque. Albuquerque. Well, that's the end of the line for me. And I hope I don't mean that too literally. <laughs> Long distance? I, uh, I want to speak to Catherine Alexander at the Bar Cross Bar Ranch just outside of Belmont. Yes. Hello. Uh, Miss Alexander? Yes. This is Dan Holliday. Wonder if I might come out to the ranch and see you. Oh, you're the man who's looking for father. Mother wired me about you. Was it complimentary? Mother said she believed if anyone could find Dad, you could. Come right out. I want to talk to you. And I want to talk to you. Cab, mister? Yeah, ever hear of Valmont? Sure did. Know where it is? Sure do. Mm, uh, very far? Sure is. Uh, can you take me there? Sure can. You got enough money to pay for the trip? Sure have. Let's go, then. Sure thing. This is New Mexico holiday. Breathe deeply and treat your lungs to a shot of straight ozone. <sighs> 20 miles to Valmont, and all you've seen on the whole trip is four buzzards, three in the air, and the one driving. And if he's a cab driver, I'm a flying disc. Car behind. Yeah, so I hear. Wants me to pull over. Don't do it. Know them fellas? One of them is Spencer. Friend of yours? That depends on what you mean by friend. I gotta pull up. Those guys are gonna run me in the ditch. Can you fight? Nope. Then can you recommend a good dentist? What fur? Something tells me that when this is over, I'm going to need a new set of teeth. You feel better, young man? Yeah, thanks. Uh, what happened after those two fellows jumped me? Who are you? My name is Moran. I'm the caretaker up at the Bar Cross Bar Ranch. I was coming down this way when you were forced off the road. Oh, what happened to the driver? Last I saw of him, he was just a cloud of dust. <laughs> I remember now. I got out of the car. He drove away. Those two fellows started to beat you up good. When they saw me coming, they ran off, too. Mm. You had a mighty close call, young man. I had three of them. After this, my luck runs out. Somebody after you? And vice versa. Say, uh, how far is the ranch? Half a mile up the road. <laughs> Better take it easy. Come on, I've got to get to the ranch. Feel you can make it? My friend, I've got to make it. This is not good. Spencer and his grill have followed me all the way out here trying to stop me at every turn. Maybe I'm getting warm. But if that's true, why hasn't someone else found Dr. Alexander? Here's the ranch house, Mr. Holliday. You say Miss Catherine was expecting you? Yes, but hardly in this condition. You're Dan Holliday? Well, what happened? You're all beaten up. So this is Catherine Alexander. What a beautiful girl. And what beautiful eyes. You'd better lie down, Mr. Holliday. You're badly hurt. Oh, no, thanks, Miss Alexander. I... I don't feel that bad. I just look that way. Anything more I could do, Miss Kathy? Oh, no. No, and thank you so much. 
If you hadn't come along, Mr. Holliday might have been badly injured. Perhaps fatally. Thank you, Miss Kathy. Now then, how about a hot shower? You can get a rub down and change of clothes. Miss Alexander, you read a man's mind. Sometimes that's a pleasure. Depending on the man. You're depending on me? What do you think? Well, this is more like it. Hot shower, brisk rub down, little iodine on a few... <clears throat> ouch, ouch, that stings. And Catherine was kind enough to loan me some riding clothes. That should indicate a sojourn in the saddle out on the desert. With the stars blinking their approval of my companion. Blinking approval? Holiday, you're an incurable romantic. Isn't this beautiful? That gorgeous sky and the stars. You love it, don't you? I always have. Always will. Have you been here long? The Bar Cross Bar belonged to my dad. We used to come out during the summer. Now I live here all the time. Alone? Oh, there's always Moran. Moran? <laughs> he's a strange old fellow. <laughs> People around here say he's a little <laughs> touched. But he's been wonderful to me. Oh, uh, say, those men who jumped me down the road. Moran, ever seen them before? How could he? They were strangers. Oh. Your, uh, your mother told me you've been searching for your father a long time. Yes. Mother and I have spent a fortune on private detectives, investigators, following up leads, but nothing ever happened. Yes, I know. Oh, tell me, Miss Alexander. Kathy, please. Uh, Kathy... Have you any idea where I might begin to look? I thought you might give me a starting point. Mm, not unless he would be back in the city. He just walked out one day. No one ever saw him again. Well, I'd better go back there and start from scratch. You don't have to leave right away. I'd enjoy staying a while. Maybe I have been lonesome. Perhaps I've forgotten what companionship can be. Perhaps. You'll stay... A while? A while. Good. Say, the time. We'll be much too late for dinner. Come on, I'll race you. You're on. Hurry or I'll beat you. I'm at the corral gate already. Kathy, look out! Ah! Kathy! Kathy. Mr. Holliday, what happened? You're racing. The horse stumbled over that lower bar and threw her. Look at that gash in her head. Oh, she's unconscious. I, I hope she isn't seriously hurt. Oh, stand there, man. Get in the house. Call a doctor. Yes, a doctor. A doctor. Hurry, will you? Of course. Get into the medicine cabinet in the house. I need some bandages. She may be suffering from multiple contusions. Multiple contusions? Or even a compound skull fracture. Hurry, will you? Compound skull fracture? I don't know if you can find it. Hurry, I said. There isn't much time. Okay, Dr. Alexander. <laughs> You are listening to Box 13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Well, now I'm back in the city again, walking up the street towards that same grim gray house where I first met Abner Blake. Up the steps, Holiday, and write the final chapter. That was a nice job, Holiday. I was nice about it. What do you mean? You didn't see the look in Dr. Alexander's eyes when he recovered his mind. And that lovely, lovely girl being mixed up in a deal like this. If you feel sorry for her, you're making a big mistake. Yes, I know. She was following him the day he walked out into the country. She'd almost caught up with him when a hit-and-run driver knocked him down. That's when she got the idea for the disappearance act. Why not? The doctor's face had been so damaged no one would ever recognize him. And he'd lost his memory to top it off. We've got the daughter and the mother in custody. Uh, just think, if she hadn't have fallen off that horse, I might never have been able to prove that Dr. Alexander was alive. I know. Hiding him on his own ranch was the daughter's idea, too. Why not? 
No one would pay attention to an old man puttering around the place? Uh, I've got a story, and I don't like it. Mother and daughter hide amnesia victim to collect insurance. Oh, excuse me. Blake speaking. Uh, yes, he's here. For you, Holiday. Oh, thanks. Hello. Mr. Holiday, this is Susie. Oh, yes, Susie. There's a message for you in box 13. Shall I read it to you? Now, Susie, you know you're not supposed to open my mail. But this is already open. It's a postcard. Oh, is it interesting? I think it is. All right, come on, come on, tell me what it says. It says, rental for box 13, $15. Oh, fine. Goodbye, Susie. Next week, same time, Ellen Ladd stars as Dan Holliday in Box 13. Alan Ladd appears through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures and may currently be seen in Wild Harvest. Box 13 is written and directed by Ted Hediger. Original music was composed and conducted by Rudy Schrager. This is a Mayfair production. Thank <laughs> you.